Bonjour mes amis, je m'appelle Tito, je fais des vidéos sur les finances personnelles sur mon autre chaîne. Mais sur cette chaîne, je parle d'autres choses comme aujourd'hui où je vais revoir le film à Josh Epo. As lovebirds Dapo and Tani prepare for their wedding in Ibadan, their families gather the day before the wedding, but festivities soon turn into turmoil as family tensions and long-held secrets threaten to tear the couple apart when two family members are caught with their pants down. Ajoshikpo is written by Stephen Okonkwo and directed by Kayode Kasum. Now, this review will contain mild spoilers. So, if you're watching the review to find out if Ajoshikpo is worth seeing at the cinemas, I'm going to do something I don't normally do in my reviews. I'm going to put my neck on the line and say, yes, this movie is actually worth seeing at the cinema. I thoroughly enjoyed it when I saw it at the premiere, and I think that this is going to be one of the biggest Nollywood films of 2024, not just in terms of entertainment value, but also in terms of earnings. I think this movie is going to make lots and lots of money at the cinema. So, once again, if you want to find out if this movie is worth your time, I think it is. You can stop watching the review now and here, and you can come back, you can go to the cinema and watch it, and then come back to watch the rest of the review after you've seen the movie. Because from here on out, we're entering spoilers. Before I dive into the performances, I googled the term ajoshikpo. And what came out was relationship or interactive. And I found that to be a bit interesting. I want to dig more into that. And I'll probably ask Kayode Kasumo or somebody who was in the movie why they picked that title for the film. That said, let's dive into it beginning with Le Performance. Mike Afolari and Tomike Adeoye. To be honest, when I saw the trailer of this film, that was my first concern because those aren't two actors that I would think to pair because I just felt like they wouldn't have chemistry. Um, so I was really worried about the chemistry between two of them, but I was pleasantly surprised because there was chemistry. They looked, they were very believable as this young couple, this young groom and young bride getting married in this film. So I was happy about that. Another concern I had primarily about Tomike this time is that I haven't seen Tomike do, do that much acting, right? I saw her last year in Egu and she was good in that. But aside from that, I haven't seen Tomike in anything else apart from Phases, which was a few years ago and which was also directed by Kayode Kasum pretty much at the start of or in the early stages of Kayode's directing career. So I was concerned about Tomike being a lead in this film and her delivering, you know, that character, Tani. But once again, you know, she delivered as Tani and Mike delivered as Dark Ball. He was very believable as this young groom and this younger brother to Timini's character. And um, Tomika was also quite believable as, they're believable as a couple, you know, as a bride and a groom. And the chemistry at the end of the day was there. I was pleasantly surprised. And I told Mike as much as at the premiere after the movie that I was worried, but he and Tomika really delivered. Now, um, uh, Yemi Shulade and Bisola Ayola. Yemi Shulade plays the father of the groom. Uh, this, he's a loving dad, but he's also quite the philanderer. <laughs> and he has questionable morals, if any morals at all, right? And he was, he was hilarious in this film. And he all, it just reminded me of how good a performer Yemi Shulade is. Because the last time I saw him was in Ijobo, just a few months ago. He was really good in that. And the crowd, or the audience rather, loved him in this movie. Bisola Ayola was also really good. Kyle DeCasum said something at the end of the movie, at the premiere. He said that when you read the script, you're not meant to like Yetunde, i.e. the character played by Bisola. But Bisola brings such charisma to her performance that you can't help but at least sympathize with Yetunde, who finds herself in this situation. <laughs> so much. Bisola, thank you for being your A-game. We always love working with you. Thank you to do it again. Everybody there, Bisola Ayola. Here today, let me tell you something about this, how Bisola is so good. Bisola is so good at, when you read this script, you're not supposed to like it today. But down here, you're all laughing, you're cheering, and you're all happy. The most lovable, you already know. Bisola Ayola. Hey guys, I'm interrupting the video very briefly to ask a small favor of you. Like this video and subscribe to my channel as well by clicking on the black subscribe button. You doing those things would help me, this video, and my channel a great deal. In addition, an advert or two is going to play in the course of this video. Please be sure to watch them because that's how I make money from YouTube. Thank you if you've done any of those things or if you will do any of those, th of those things. Now let's head back to the video. And I told, <laughs> I told Bisola in the premiere 
that she, she did most of the heavy lifting in this film in terms of performing because in the movie herself and the Emi Shilade's character are pretty much bound together because um I mean if you've seen the trailer Yemi Shulade's character, the father of the groom, you know, they, they get, I was about to say, they get jiggy. <laughs> they get busy and essentially he inserts himself into Yetunde and um, he's unable to eject himself out of Yetunde. <laughs> so that meant that they were bound together. And it's, I think it's tougher in that kind of situation for the person in front when you're in that uncomfortable situation than it is for the person at the back. At least the person at the back can rest on the person in front or can do something, but the person in front is like hunched over and is just in a very uncomfortable position. They're both in an uncomfortable position, but I think the person in front is more uncomfortable. And, you know, in this situation, Bisola was that, you know, character. And, you know, she was just... I just imagined it being rather challenging for her, but she still delivered... And um, it was a task. I'm sure it was something different, you know, in terms of all the acting she's done. And I commended her for, for doing a fantastic job, not just with the physical acting, but with um, also delivering Yetunde and playing. I don't think I've ever seen Bisola play that. Bisola has played lots of characters in the past. I don't think I've ever seen her play a character like Yetunde before. So kudos once again to herself and to Yemi Shulade. Next, Timini Ebusan and Ronke Oshodi Oke. Let me start with Timini. In a movie filled with great performances, Timini Ebusan's performance was pretty much the best of all those great performances, or the most impressive at least. Because Timini is in this film speaking Yoruba, and I'm sure the crowd or the audience was pleasantly surprised by that. And he also showed emotional range in the movie, you know, playing this big brother who is trying to be there for his younger brother you know as he's preparing to get married but also as a character who has some acrimony with his mother played by Ronke Oshodioke and there's there's lots of emotion you know between both characters because there's there's not beef but there's acrimony between both of them because of things that happened in their past and Timi Timi really did show the emotion and the range and he just really delivered on that character and it was it was it was refreshing to see and he did a really good job i think it's him speaking yoruba that really really wowed the audience and will pretty much wow everyone who will see this film because we didn't know he had it in him and it, it was a testament to how how seriously timini takes his craft so kudos to him ronke ronke Oke also did a fantastic job i think she the most laughs from this film came from her character i.e the mother of the groom she was hilarious she understood the assignment, you know, and she really, really delivered. And, you know, once again, the dynamic between her character and Timini's character, i.e. mother and son, they really bounced off each other really well in the few scenes that they have in the movie where they're just rehashing the tension between both characters. So Ronke Oshodioke and Timini Ebusun, Timini Ebusun, kudos to two of them for doing a brilliant job in this movie. Next, Deemi Okolawo and Ibrahim Yekini, aka aka Itele. Deemi Okolawo, I think this is in recent times at least, this would be my favorite Deemi Okolawo performance because it wasn't the conventional Deemi Okolawo. He wasn't a lover boy in this film. He wasn't trying to woo a babe. He wasn't, you know, shifty or crooked in this film. He's this uncle who is happy that, you know, this these two people are coming together. He's slightly older and they use hair and makeup to um, accentuate that. I appreciated it. And, you know, he kind of gets dealt a, a wrong or a tough card in the film at some point. And I just, I liked the performance. He was in a sticky position. <laughs> Interesting choice of words. He was in a bit of a sticky position in the movie. And he's, you know, helps the rest of the cast to try and solve this issue that they face with um, Bisola and the father of the groom being bound together for whatever reason. But I think DME did a good job. It was refreshing to see him play something so different. And I really enjoyed his performance. Ibrahim Yekini, aka Itele. I think Ibrahim Yekini's character was my favorite in the film. He plays this um, Babalao in the movie who is summoned to try and save the day. And I just really liked his scenes particularly when they try and, you know, smuggle him into the house. 
I, I've, I've seen Ibrahim Yekini in a couple of films since Jagun Jagun. I noticed him from Jagun Jagun and I've seen him in Jagun Jagun, Kesari and um, Egon as well. I think this is the first comedic role that I've seen him in and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'd like to see Ibrahim Yekini play more comedic characters in films. He's a fantastic actor any day, but it was really nice to see him do comedy. And I, I think, like I, if I didn't mention it earlier, this was his character was my favorite character in the film. <laughs> when DME's character goes to see him and gives him his clothes and he's confused as, as to why he's giving him his clothes, that I found that to be quite hilarious. I, I really enjoyed his scenes and I really enjoyed the character. Finally, Mercy Aigbe and Bolaji Ogumola. And Bolaji Ogumola, by the way, is one of the executive producers of the film. I'll come to her, but let me start with Mercy Aigbe. Mercy Aigbe is the mother of the bride and um, it was quite good. It was refreshing as well. I think most of the characters or most of the actors in this film, I've never seen them play these types of characters that they play in this movie. Yeah, I can safely say that. I've never seen Mercy Aibe play the mother of the bride before and uh, she did it really well. She was, you know, enjoyable in the, in the movie. She's this very religious woman. <laughs> She's religious on the surface, but um, when in closed circles, she doesn't do very christian or upright things right and if you've seen the movie you know what i mean so her performance was quite good bolaji ogumola she plays the friend to the bride probably the chief bridesmaid and she did a, a, a good enough job it's more of a supporting role and um there wasn't really much to like extract from her character it was a different character that I, that i've seen her play typically she's the she's a desirable character in most of the films that I've seen Bolaji Ogumola in but in this film she's more of a simple girl I think her character's name was Mary and there's sparks fly between her character and Timini's character I think what went on between her character and Timini's character and the sparks we see flying in this film um, maybe they want to use that to perhaps propose or hint at a sequel to this film and hey if this film really does well and it probably will There'll probably be a sequel and who knows. So all in all, really good performances in this film. And um, if you've seen the movie, right, or when you do see the film, come back and let me know in the comment section which character was your favorite. Because this is one of those films where each character really stands out and it won't be out of place for you to pick one or two that you will identify as your favorite. So let me know which character was your favorite in the comment section down below. Ce que j'ai aimé. Dope casting. The cast in this film was really, really good. They were an attractive cast first and foremost, but more importantly, they worked really well together. Everyone was bouncing off each other really well and the chemistry and the dialogue, everything was there and it was flowing. And I think they couldn't have gotten a better cast or you know, cast better actors to play these, these characters in this film. Next, art direction and production design, really good. This film was visually stimulating. The aesthetics were there. The sets were nice and colorful. Everything was well placed in the sets in the film. And well, there was a scene where I did notice something, but I won't, I won't get into that. But essentially, production design in this film was really good. Wardrobe and costume also was really good. Everyone looked really nice in their attire, you know, in their celebration or, you know, their party attire and even their regular day-to-day -day attire because for the majority of the film, it's the day before the traditional wedding. So people, lots of characters are in their regular clothes. But even at that, it looked, it looked um, organic. It looked authentic, right? Uh, so yeah, wardrobe and costuming was awesome. Finally, the nuances in this film were really spot on. You see, when it comes to Nigerian weddings, particularly Nigerian weddings in Nigeria, and particularly Yoruba weddings, there are just certain things that are uh, commonplace, right? And they captured a few of those things in the film, from the mother of the groom or, you know, the mother of one of the parents, you know, wanting to be with her friends all the time and making sure that they're taken care of, to the scenes where there's dialogue in the backyard between main characters and in the background, you see people, you see staff, you know, cooking food and preparing things for the celebration, which is going to happen the following day. There are just so many things that are very common when it comes to Nigerian weddings and Yoruba weddings that were intentionally and, dare I say, master, masterfully captured in this movie. So those nuances, spot on, they really, you could tell that they took their time to think of many of these things that were captured in the film. Ce que je n'ai pas aimé. 
The first thing that I didn't particularly like about this film is the fact that some of the emotional scenes, a couple of them in the movie, lingered or they lasted a bit longer than they needed to. And it felt a bit jarring, right? Because in certain, in certain cases, they go from a very funny scene to then a very heavy or emotional scene and then to another very funny scene. And it kind of like threw the pacing off a couple of times, in my opinion. So there was that. Um, also, continuity in the film, okay, there's a scene in the movie where it's night time, from what I see, and, and it's the scene where the nurses show up, right? But then the scene after that, it's, it looks like daytime, so I felt like that was a bit of a continuity issue. It may have just been me, but anyway, these things happen, so I'm willing to excuse that. Finally, what I didn't like about the film, well, not so much the film itself, but the promotion and the marketing of the film, is the fact that this movie, it has like a sexual undertone to it. I mean, you, understand, you know the premise of the film. Two, a man and a woman come together, they have sexual relations, and they're bound together, they're stuck together, right? So that in itself is the sexual undertone. Even though there isn't, you know, nudity in the film, and it's not, the sexuality is not overt, there is spicy language in the film and once again the undertone or the theme of the film is is a bit sexual that said I, I i'm not seeing the promoters of the film the marketers of the film the, or the filmmakers themselves or even the cinemas enforcing that this movie is not suitable for children i don't feel like this like anyone under the age of 16 or at least 13 should be sold a cinema ticket to see this movie but um, I'm not seeing anyone enforcing that. And it's a bit of a letdown. I'm very big on ethics and uh, preserving the innocence of our children and our younger ones. And, um, but unfortunately, because of the country that we live in and because of the times that we live in, people tend to put money and capitalism <laughs> over ethics and over doing what is morally right. You, you get me? So I think every, the parties involved, the powers that be, from the filmmakers to the cinemas and whatnot, could do a whole lot better in stating that this movie is not suitable for children. This isn't the kind of film that I, or many of you, I do believe, would want to see with your child sitting next to you. Your child being somebody, your ward being under the age of 16 or whatever. You get my point. So I think, you know, that's something that can be improved upon going forward. The premiere, <laughs> the premiere of this movie, it needed a place in this review because that premiere was amazing. Okay, so I've been for a few premieres of Coyote Kasum's films. I mean, I went for the premiere of Can't Believe the Whole 30 Yards, the premiere of Sugar Rush, which was produced by um, Jadi Oshiberu, but directed by Coyote Kasum, the premiere of Afa Mifuna, the premiere of Obaram, and maybe one or two others. And, and now this one, I think this is the best Kaede Kasum. And Kaede Kasum throws the best. His movies had the best premieres, if, in my opinion. But this one for Ajoshikwo was the best Kaede Kasum movie premiere and the best Nollywood movie premiere I've ever been to, if I'm being honest. And the funny thing is that Kaede, unlike the other Kaede Kasum movie premieres I've been invited to, Kaede didn't invite me for this one. It was someone else who invited me for this one. So I got, an, rather than a media, you know, tag or and wristband, I got an invitation. So when I got there on Sunday, I was presenting my invitation and the ladies at the counter said they didn't know anything about the invitation, that I should wait till 8 p.m., that maybe by then they'd have gotten instructions about the IV. So I was there standing and waiting. And then, you know, shout out to Kadi Kasum, who really, Kadi is a friend of mine, I have to say, but Kadi, he... I mean, it felt like he went out of his way on this day and he, he, his hospitality, if Cowdy wasn't a filmmaker, he'd probably be in the hospitality industry or in events planning, yeah? He took good care of me. He saw me, I was like, ah, Tito, how far? Take, VIP tag. I wore the tag and I pretty much got VIP treatment. I sat at, you know, at the reception and all this while, mind you, I'm thinking the normal movie premiere thing, you know, you get a drink, you hang around and then they say, okay, it's time to go into the cinema. But as you guys probably know, because you've probably seen the images, this movie premiere was handled like a wedding reception. And it, everything looked like a wedding reception. From the venue, which was at the back of the cinema at Landmark, they created a makeshift, a beautiful makeshift hall. 
refreshments were there everything it looked like a fantastic wedding reception everyone was dolled up looking fantastic in their attire so i was sitting there thinking like okay I'm, i kept on reminding myself this is a movie premiere this is a movie premiere this is a movie premiere but it just more and more felt like a wedding reception the music was great the the guests were fantastic and beautiful everything looked fantastic i was served food and drink everything was top notch my mind was blown i saw so many and another thing was the audience or sorry the crowd people that attended this event Cali has a you know a collection of actors and filmmakers people in front of and behind the camera that he works with you know that you tend to see at his at his events so they were there but also people in the industry that he's cool with so it, i think there are lots of familiar faces i saw lots of familiar faces and i think other people who are in attendance who are in one way or the other connected to Cali Kasum saw each other there so it just felt like a, a hangout amongst friends and i was particularly happy because i saw a lot of people that i know in the industry i it was the second time that i met Bjorn Steven the fantastic director i even i was so happy to see her and i asked for a selfie and we took a selfie together she looked beautiful by the way you don't see Bjorn Steven you know decked up or dolled up you know with makeup and everything you don't see that very often she looked gorgeous I also saw Bisola Iola, I saw Bolaji Ogumola, who else did I see? Micah Folari, I saw him at the after party. I saw friends from Shock NG, Dami Lare. I saw a friend from Bella Naija, also an another Dami. I saw uh, Grand Prince Ita, who I've been a, a guest on his movie review program a couple of times on Pop Central. I saw Ebu, aka Ebi Kicks. It was just a fun time. And then when that was over, we went in to see this brilliant movie. And then after the movie, there was the after party. It was a fantastic movie premiere. That's just what I'm getting out, getting at. Shout out to Harmony Lux Events, who organized this event. And uh, Harmony, he was the event planner. He was all over the place, organizing things, making sure things were in order. And it was a fantastic event. And I think it was the first of its kind. I'm sure Nollywood took notice of this brilliant um, movie premiere that was conducted or carried out like a wedding reception. And it flowed and it made sense because this movie is, is largely a wedding movie, right? And it was treated as such. So it was just mind-blowing. I, I typically am not out past 12 midnight. I was out till like past 1 a.m. <laughs> that day. <laughs> the premiere was fantastic. Best premiere I've, I've, of a Nollywood film I've ever been to. I'll be shocked if I attend a better movie premiere this year. The only thing that can top that would be if I'm flown out, <laughs> out of the country, or out of Lagos at least, to attend a, a kick-ass movie premiere. In conclusion, I think this is the movie to see this year, right? And if you're the kind of person who wants to see or who likes to see films with friends or, you know, with people, this movie is one of those films that you should see with people, you know, because you'd be laughing together and just talking together while watching the movie. It's more enjoyable with other people. I'll say that much. And to be honest, I, this movie is better than, you know, those films that came out towards the tail end of 2023. Um, this movie, <laughs> yes, I'm throwing shade. This movie was way more entertaining and enjoyable for me than those films. And I hope that this film breaks records and does just as well, if not even better than those films. Um, I mean, there's enough room for all birds to fly. The point I'm making is, I don't see why this movie shouldn't do as well as those ones too, because it was even more enjoyable for me, right? And I think that this film is going to be talked about for years and years to come. It was, it, there are just so many good things about this movie, and I think it's worth your time and your money. But please seek a second opinion because People are funny. You can go and see this film now and say that it wasn't all that and then you'd blame me. So please seek a second opinion. But as you can tell from this review, I enjoyed the film and I'm putting my weight behind this movie at Josh Ekwo. Uh, special shout outs. Uh, shout outs to Stephen Okonkwo who wrote the screenplay of this film. Congratulations, you wrote a brilliant screenplay. Shout outs to Dari Olaiton and Kaori Kasum. The story of the movie is by both of them. They are creative partners and they've brought us a few films in recent years so shout out to both you gentlemen shout out to Bolaji Ogumola who is one of the executive producers of this film Bolaji is really you know going to the ends of the earth marketing and you know promoting this film so I wish her all the best 
uh, congratulations, Bolaji. I believe you guys are going to do really well at the box office with this movie. Shout out to the producer of the film, um, Faye Fumi. Faye Fumi, you did a really good job. I'm, I'm happy and I'm very proud of what you've achieved and what you and your colleagues essentially have achieved with this film. Shout out to Ife Olujibe as well. Um, these are all people under like the film tribe umbrella. They work closely with Kaede Kasum and it's just really inspiring to see the big things that you guys are doing and to see that you guys have pretty much struck gold in my opinion with this movie. Congratulations to all involved. <laughs> Time to rate this film. I was going to give this movie four jollofs over five, but while at the premiere and while I was having a fantastic time, I said to myself, I'm going to give this movie an additional 0.5 jollof based on how fantastic this premiere is. <laughs> so four jollofs because of the film and an additional 0.5 because of the premiere. When I saw the trailer months ago, I didn't think I'd enjoy this film, but here I am today giving a Josh Ikwo 4.5 jollofs over 5. 4.5 over 5. Congratulations, guys. I'm confident that uh, by the end of the year, when I'm doing my top 10, I'll be talking about this movie or mentioning this movie once more. <sighs> I actually won't mind seeing this film one more time at the cinema. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this review, I really hope that you did. Please like it by clicking on the like button and subscribe to my channel as well by clicking on the black subscribe button underneath the video. On this channel, I don't just do Nollywood movie reviews. I also talk about some other things to check out some of the other things I talk about and some of my past Nollywood um, reviews. You can click the card in the corner of the screen. I also have a, a podcast which should be coming back this month, April. God help me, um, I've just been so busy, but you can watch season one and season two of the podcast. Fingers crossed season three will come out before April ends. But in the meantime, feel free to click the card in the corner of the screen, head over to the podcast and subscribe to the channel or check me out on other on podcast platforms. It's called the 30 minute podcast. I've said so much. This has been a long review, but it's been well worth it. If you've seen um, I Josh Iqbal, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about the movie. Thank you guys so much for watching. For the final times, I will see you in the next one. Peace.